leaves derive their typically greenish to yellowish green color primarily from the light absorbing pigment molecules called chlorophyll, which are found in special cellular organelles known as chloroplasts, where the essential process of photosynthesis is carried out. A typical leaf cell contains from between 10 to 100 chloroplasts. Each chloroplast is enclosed by a double-layered phospholipid membrane. Within this outer membrane lies the fluid-filled stroma, where the light-independent reactions of photosynthesis take place. Suspended within the stroma is a collection of disc-like sacs called thylakoids, where the chlorophyll molecules are located and where the light reactions of photosynthesis take place. Thylakoids consist of a membrane and a liquid-filled interior called a lumen. In most cases, the thylakoids are arranged in stacks called grana. Chloroplasts are very active inside of cells. Under low light conditions, they spread out in order to maximize their surface area and obtain the greatest amount of light energy. But as the light becomes more intense, they migrate toward the cell walls where they align themselves vertically in columns. Or they can also turn sideways to minimize the light's potentially damaging effects. Sometimes they do both. In higher plants, the movement of chloroplasts is controlled by light receptor molecules called phototropins that play an important role in phototropism. The characteristic green color of leaves is due to the presence of an extremely important pigment molecule called chlorophyll that is essential to photosynthesis because of its amazing ability to capture and transfer light energy so that it can be converted into chemical energy that organisms can use to support their life activities. There are several types of chlorophyll, but chlorophyll A is its most predominant form. Chemically, chlorophyll A consists of 55 carbons, 72 hydrogens, 5 oxygens, 4 nitrogens, and 1 magnesium. As can be seen from this structural formula, the central, positively charged magnesium ion is surrounded by, and ionically bonded to, four negatively charged nitrogens. This area is the key to the function of the chlorophyll molecule because electrons in this region become energized when they receive photons of light of certain wavelengths. Chlorophyll B is just slightly different from chlorophyll A in that one CH3 methyl group has been replaced by a CHO aldehyde group. As a result of this rather small chemical change, chlorophyll B absorbs light at a different wavelength than chlorophyll A. As can be seen from this chart, both types of chlorophyll absorb light over a fairly wide spectrum of violet to blue and orange to red. The green and yellow wavelengths, however, are not absorbed and that is why leaves look green or yellowish green to us. Chlorophyll is located inside of plant cells in the thylakoid membranes of the chloroplasts in structures called photosystems. Here, the light excited electrons are passed from one chlorophyll molecule to another. The light energy would simply be re-emitted as light and lost but for the fact that an energized electron is ejected from a chlorophyll molecule to an electron acceptor molecule to be used to power the reactions of photosynthesis. This process of electron ejection takes place only in chlorophyll molecules located in a special protein complex of the photosystems called reaction centers. Aerobic cellular respiration, the oxygen-dependent process by which most organisms utilize the energy stored in the chemical bonds of glucose in their food, almost completely relies on the energy harvesting process of photosynthesis. 
by which most of the glucose and oxygen are created in the natural world. During photosynthesis, six carbon dioxide molecules and six water molecules are combined to create one molecule of energy-rich glucose, C6H12O6, and six molecules of diatomic oxygen. Light energy, as well as light harvesting chlorophyll molecules, are required to make this reaction possible. In contrast, during aerobic cellular respiration, one molecule of glucose combines with six molecules of diatomic oxygen to form six molecules of carbon dioxide and six molecules of water, while releasing heat energy as life's metabolic activities are carried out. As can be seen, these two reactions are the exact opposites of one another. Because the products of aerobic cellular respiration, water and carbon dioxide, are the reactants of photosynthesis, while the reactants of aerobic cellular respiration, glucose and oxygen, are the products of photosynthesis. And that is why these two essential processes are mutually dependent on one another. A good deal of glucose produced during photosynthesis ends up being converted into starch, the substance plants use to store energy for the next growing season. And that's why it's not surprising that this energy-rich material is found in large amounts in all of our basic food crops, such as wheat and potatoes. The formula seen here depicts a small section of a starch molecule consisting of three glucose units linked end-to-end. -end. Complete starch molecules contain hundreds or thousands of long chains of glucose units. Inside of plant cells, glucose is converted into starches, mainly in organelles called amyloplasts, through a biochemical linking process known as polymerization. Amyloplasts also store the starch they produce and can break it down whenever the plant needs glucose and chloroplasts, the organelles where glucose is made during photosynthesis, are capable of manufacturing and storing starches too. Starch is a key source of the glucose used in cellular respiration in plants. However, it is interesting to note that a slight change in the way the glucose units are bound together results in the creation of cellulose, and the glucose in cellulose molecules is not available for cellular respiration. So, cellulose takes on a structural role instead, forming long microfibril threads that are the main components of the cell walls of plants. The light-independent reactions of photosynthesis, also known as the Calvin cycle, can take place both in sunlight or in darkness and result in the creation of energy-rich sugars. These reactions occur in the fluid-filled stroma of the chloroplasts and require carbon dioxide from the air, as well as the ATP and NADPH produced during the light-dependent reactions of photosynthesis. The Calvin cycle begins with the critical process of carbon fixation, which occurs when a carbon dioxide molecule is added to a CO2 acceptor molecule known as ribulose biphosphate, or RUBP which contains five carbon atoms and two phosphate groups. This reaction, which only occurs in the presence of an enzyme known as Rubisco, produces an unstable six-carbon product that immediately splits into two identical three-carbon sugar compounds known as three PGAs. After this occurs, one of the three PGA molecules exits the cycle and will be used to make glucose and other sugars. The other molecule remains in the cycle, First, it reacts with ATP. Then, the product of this reaction receives a hydrogen atom from NADPH, producing NADP and a new carbohydrate compound known as G3P. After that, a complex series of steps known as the regeneration of ribulose takes place that consumes another molecule of ATP. These steps result in the formation of a new ribulose biphosphate molecule, and with that, the Calvin cycle is complete. Now the cycle repeats itself with the fixation of a second molecule of CO2. 
Note that one repetition of the Calvin cycle is required for each atom of carbon that is added or fixed to a carbohydrate molecule. So in order to make one molecule of 3PGA, which contains three atoms of carbon, three repetitions of the cycle are required. That means the Calvin cycle must be repeated six times to make one six-carbon glucose molecule from two 3PGA molecules. Glucose is the ultimate product of photosynthesis because its chemical bonds store the energy that was captured from sunlight during the light reactions of photosynthesis. And glucose is the key nutrient that is broken down during aerobic respiration to generate the ATP that is used to power the activities of living things. The light-dependent reactions of photosynthesis occur in a number of complicated steps that are devoted to harvesting light energy from the sun, converting that energy into biologically useful chemical energy, as well as reducing power while producing oxygen as a byproduct. The light reactions are carried out in the chloroplasts in four major protein complexes that are embedded in the thylakoid membranes. These complexes are known as photosystem II, the cytochrome B6F complex, photosystem 1, and ATP synthase. The first complex at work in the light-dependent reactions of photosynthesis is photosystem 2. It consists of a reaction center complex surrounded by several light harvesting complexes. Each light harvesting complex contains various photosynthetic pigment molecules including chlorophyll A and B as well as light-absorbing compounds called carotenoids, all of which are bound to special proteins. Each time one photon of light strikes a chlorophyll molecule in a light-harvesting complex, its energy is absorbed, causing one of its electrons to become excited or energized. The energy is passed along until it reaches the reaction center complex, where it is transferred to a special pair of chlorophyll molecules. This energy causes each of them to eject an electron and then donate it to a primary electron acceptor molecule called pheophyton. The electrons from photosystem II are passed on to a mobile electron carrier molecule known as plastoquinone QB, which also picks up two protons from the stroma. The carrier transports the electrons to the cytochrome B6F complex and then releases the two protons into the lumen and from there the electrons are moved to a second mobile carrier molecule called plastocyanin, which carries them to photosystem 1. Another important feature of the cytochrome complex is that it uses the energy of the electrons passing through it to pump hydrogen ions, that is, protons, from the stroma of the chloroplast across the thylakoid membrane into the lumen. The proton gradient that this creates produces an electrochemical force that will later be used by the ATP synthase complex to make ATP. At the same time the cytochrome complex is busy pumping protons and transporting electrons, water is being enzymatically split in a specialized part of photosystem II called the oxygen evolving complex. The splitting of water results in the production of two hydrogen ions or protons, two electrons and one oxygen atom. The electrons released by this process are used to replace the electrons that were donated by the pair of reaction center chlorophyll molecules. The hydrogen ions produced from water splitting enter the lumen, joining the other protons being pumped in from the cytochrome complex. And the oxygen atom produced by the splitting combines with another oxygen atom to create breathable diatomic oxygen, or O2, which ends up being released into the air. Oxygen is the first product of the light-dependent reactions of photosynthesis. Returning now to photosystem one, we find that the de-energized electrons from the cytochrome B6F complex are delivered directly to the reaction center pair of chlorophyll molecules. Here, they receive an extra boost of light energy before being passed down another electron transport chain which ends with a mobile transport molecule called ferredoxin. 
Ferredoxin carries the electrons to an enzyme called ferredoxin NADP reductase. The enzyme then adds the transferred electrons to NADP, which, along with the addition of the hydrogen ion, forms NADPH, which is the second product of the light-dependent reactions of photosynthesis. NADPH will provide the reducing power used to form sugars in the light-independent reactions of photosynthesis that come later. In the final step of the light-dependent reactions, the ATP synthase complex utilizes the electrochemical force created by the unequal concentration of hydrogen ions on either side of the thylakoid membrane to make ATP from ADP and phosphate ions. One ATP is produced for each hydrogen ion that passes through the complex. ATP is the third vital product of the light-dependent reactions of photosynthesis and will provide the chemical energy needed to make sugars in the light-independent reactions of photosynthesis that follow. So in summary, the light-dependent reactions are the first stage of photosynthesis. They are the complicated process by which plants, algae, and certain protists capture and store the energy from sunlight in the form of the energy-carrying molecules ATP and NADPH while releasing oxygen into the air. Photosynthesis is an essential, life-sustaining process which takes place in plants, algae, and certain protists. It uses captured light energy to convert carbon dioxide and water into stored chemical energy in the form of sugars, while releasing oxygen into the atmosphere. Looking at its most basic chemical equation, we find that six molecules of carbon dioxide react with six molecules of water in the presence of light to produce one molecule of the sugar glucose, C6H12O6, plus six molecules of diatomic oxygen. In reality, photosynthesis is not quite as simple as that. In fact, it is carried out in two distinct series of complex biochemical steps, known as the light-dependent reactions of photosynthesis and the light-independent reactions of photosynthesis. In many ways, photosynthesis is the key to life on Earth. Its importance cannot be overstated, because photosynthesis is responsible for creating essentially all of the food and all of the oxygen on our planet. So without it, most living things would soon cease to exist.